So today's video, currently in the world, AI, AI, AI seems to be the word around. People are afraid of it. People don't know what it is. People are curious. People are like, there's a myriad of <laughs> uh, emotions when it comes to AI. So since I love technology and I talk about technology a lot, I decided to do a, a series on AI. So this is it. <laughs> and in this particular video, which is the part one of this entire series, we are going to discuss what is AI. And I'm going to make, try to make it as um, easy to understand, as comprehensive as possible. And I'm just going to touch on what AI is, what it's supposed to be, what it is right now, and certain other that it's a revelation. Now, here's the conundrum. I never script, so this is going to be off the top of my head. So I'm hoping I won't stray too much and I'll try and keep it as one cohesive uh, thing. All the best to me and all the best to you. And let's begin. What is AI? That's the first question many people ask. What is AI? Well, AI is an abbreviation for artificial intelligence. Now, if you're going to take the two words artificial intelligence, which make up this system, what we can define um Artificial intelligence is the quest of humanity to create or simulate human intelligence using computer machinery. So in the sense that we are actively using computers and creating what we call algorithms. Now, our algorithms are lines of code that form up rules that are executed by a computer. So maybe in this algorithm the algorithm is to find out whether the piece of paper is blank or not if it is blank say it is blank if it is not blank say it's not blank now this is just code it's not really an algorithm typically algorithms are more expansive because they 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 they, they consolidate a lot of flex because keep in mind like i said we are trying to replicate human intelligence. We are going to use these algorithms and we are going to use computers to try and recreate what humans have had and what have made us the superior uh, species for millennia now. And in doing that, so scientists, mainly computer scientists, computer engineers, and the like, even philosophers, came to the understanding that the brain has a specific way it works. The brain's neural networks, which are the subsystems that power our brain, run based on a concept called heuristics. Now, to simplify the explanation of a heuristic, a heuristic is in the human mind or with um, relation to the human brain is a set of calculated guesses the brain uses to identify things quickly. So basically, what our brain does is that when it sees something, it goes through a process of identification. Your eyes scan the thing. This happens in microseconds. Your eyes scan the thing. And if you have a backlog of data of information of what this thing could possibly be, your brain then makes calculated or educated guesses based on your experiences and then eliminates what it could be and then provides you most likely what the answer is. So that's what um, AI is trying to capture using algorithms and what we call machine learning. Now, machine learning is a subset of AI because sadly and unfortunately, we have not gotten to the AI, AI that we are looking forward to. Now, if, you, if you, the AI we are looking for is something along the realms of Tony Stark's AI, Jarvis, or Wednesday, or Wednesday or Friday, no, Friday, sorry, Friday where Friday and um, Jarvis, they, they could kind of think for themselves. They have what we call sentience and sentience is an awareness of your existence. And our, when in, that, in, in that awareness, you have, we hope, a certain moral code and you have an understanding of how your actions affect people around you, how they affect you, stuff like that. So. We are trying to capture this. Right now, we are in the machine learning stage and we are in various stages of this machine learning phase. Uh, I don't know if I'll consider natural language processing as part of machine learning. I could, but I will dive into that later. So that's what AI is. It is our quest to basically have our devices be like us because 
in our machines or in our computers and um, phones and everything, having this capacity, having this intelligence, the upside that many of us see or many scientists see is that computers can process and get access to far more information within the second that any human would ever be able to go through. Don't get me wrong, and scientists say this, we are not dispelling how powerful the human brain is, the processing power of the human brain is, we are not dispelling that. I mean, we are, our human brain is so powerful that we are still contending with what intelligence is and trying to figure that out to be able to uh, replicate it. And that even falls into a whole other pro problem, which is vastly philosophical, but affects this whole PI conversation. And I think I'll make that in my second video. I'm super excited for that conversation. It's called the frame problem. So now, for instance, and a good example of the benefits of AI is Google in 2018. I remember watching this uh, Google IO event where Google CEO Sundar Pichai, Sundar Pichai, actually talked about a certain research that the AI had, they didn't part using their AI in India, where they'd scanned the eyes of about 100,000 people. And from that information, they scanned the back of the eyes. From that information, what the algorithm of the AI was able to quite, not 100% accurate, but with a high accuracy, uh, with a significant accuracy, detect was people who would have cardiovascular disease, people who smoked the age and sex of people. And it was vastly interesting. Welcome to Google IO. Healthcare is one of the most important fields AI is going to transform. We announced our work on diabetic retinopathy, and we use deep learning to help doctors diagnose it. We can predict the five-year risk of you having an adverse cardiovascular event heart attack or strokes. We've been working with our partners using de-identified medical records. Turns out if you go and analyze over 100,000 data points per patient, more than any single doctor could analyze, we can actually quantitatively predict the chance of readmission 24 to 48 hours earlier than traditional methods. It gives doctors more time to act. Because just by taking pictures of the back of these eyes, and f with all that information, it was able to detect it. And this goes back into the next level, in into the next part of my AI conversation, where AI machine learning models or algorithms are vastly based on training, where you, you, you provide the machine learning model with the information you wanted to learn about. So think about it this way. You go to school, you are the computer, they bring you to class, and you're like, you are just going to learn biology, human biology for the rest of your life. That, that's your job. That's what you're going to do. We are going to fill you up with all the information about um, human biology. And with the rules and the hand algorithms that we've written, you will analyze all this information and based on whatever other factors or capabilities you are given, you can come to some productive judgments using, like I said, heuristics. So in the Google's case, the, I was able to detect all these things through the veins in the eyes where it was able to detect that, okay, this person could probably get a uh, heart disease because it's been able to process the eyes to the finest detail available to it via m machine vision because this AI was using machine vision where it can identify images and stuff like that. And it was able to detect these things because it had a huge sample field. Now, a doctor given 100,000 patients to look through their files so would we'll never be able to come to this conclusion. I wouldn't say never, but it would take a long time. But you can have your AI do this in about a week, depending on your processing power, the algorithm provided, and all the bugs and kinks you have to work with. So you can see in the grand scheme of things, the benefits of AI because we could have massive breakthroughs in science and in technology because computers process information really large scale, have access and process a large scale of information faster than we ever could. So if you could teach a computer to be a doctor and give it all the information about the patient, the 
good thing about it is that the computer could actually predict like Google's yeah, at the time, 2018, could predict that, okay, person A could potentially get a heart disease. We need to do something about that. And that's amazing. Now, I've said what AI is supposed to be. And I've also said some of the things that AI is right now. Currently, we find ourselves, like I said, in the machine learning phase. And we are in the deep learning, machine vision, natural language processing type of phase. There are a few other things. And with with the most popular of its of which is the natural language process natural language processing, which is uh if any of you have heard of Chat GPT, Chat GPT is founded on a natural language processing uh, our uh, machine learning model. And basically what natural language processing models typically do is that they are they are trained on a compendium of the human languages and understanding context comp so so this is basically what it is. Simplest way is that NLP is pretty much are uh, basically students that are being taught language. And as you, when you were learning English or any other language, we go through comprehension, grammar, composition. That's effectively what these um, models go through, where they have taught the um, languages, human languages in that framework. They have, they understand the rules of the language. They understand how the language works. They comprehend what the words mean. And then they are able to compose, write something together where that's where chat GPT comes in. I think the GPT, the GPT part of chat GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer. And I would dive into that when I'm talking about chat GPT later, but basically just understand it, that chat GPT is a, a machine learning model that was taken to school to understand English. So that's why when you, it, like in English exams, your teacher gave you a question in comprehension. They asked you, what is the name of the capital of Ghana? So you read that and you comprehended that, okay, this is what they're asking me. And then you gave an answer but put that on the wider scale of the entire sea of the internet. That's what ChatGPT kind of has been trained on. So it's just comprehends what it said, goes into its archives or its training, all the information has access to, pulls the relevant answers, puts them using grammar to fit the comprehension and then gives you a response. So that's super cool. Now we have deep learning, other forms of machine learning in smart cars. If you know anything about Tesla, Tesla is trying to create Autonomous driving cars, are self-driving cars, all of these use um, machine learning models to be able to learn and adapt and evolve and get better. But to kind of get to the close of my conversation, let me talk about the kind of four stages of uh, AI that we have. And two of these stages we are currently in. And I'm taking this from IBM's a uh, course on Coursera. I haven't taken this course by myself. It's Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. And I, I like the way they broke it down. It made sense. So the first one is reactive machines. So a reactive machine model is basically an AI system that has no memory and is very task specific. So for instance, uh, Netflix's recommendations um, part, like the, you know, when you watch Netflix and it, increasingly what you're recommended evolves it is based on a reactive machine learning uh, program where basically you feed it the information which is your habits the things you like to watch it basically pays attention to all the shows you've watched all the movies you've watched and it just makes a guess that if you like this you must definitely like these and that's what it recommends it doesn't store the information from your uh what you watched it doesn't keep it in memory it just, when it information comes in, it just generates information back out. Similarly to your cookies, the cookies help train sets in. Um, that's why your Google search is kind of different from someone else's Google search because even though that one moves more into the other step in, or the other evolution of um, AI, but it's a very good example because your search history is unique everybody we can all search something and we get slightly different responses to what we search and that is because it knows who we are and it kind of knows what i mean some people find out what worried about it 
Second is limited memory. Now, um, now with limited memory, it basically, like I said, it's adapting the ploy or the rules of heuristics where it makes calculated guesses and conclusions based on history and based on information it's been we may prove to it so information that it knows that it has gathered that has been trained on it's able to keep some of that information and it uses it to evolve itself so with time as it keeps getting trained and retrained it improves and it kind of remembers certain things that it learns so that it can better come to proper conclusions so that's kind of the area that we find ourselves now when it comes to the whole ai world so the next one is called the theory of mind and in this particular evolution of ai the ais have a full comprehension and understanding of the mind they know how the mind works how everything works together how the decisions and things affect the world affect everybody and in that vein they are able to dig deeper and understand context a lot more far better than google duplex if you should look up google duplex it's fascinating big so with, with that we that's where we are heading towards when it comes to the whole ai conversation we are looking to that direction where we would be able to have our computers um innately being innately go and seek answers to certain questions that we have no we we don't so currently what we have is that we have this, sorry, we have this problem. We know that this is within the scope of things that could be affecting this problem. We don't have the capacity to sift through all this media, all this information. So we feed it to the AI and then it does its job. But in the scope of mind, we are hoping what, what the idea is that um, the AI in itself would be curious. Curiosity would have been built into it. So it would be like, hmm. What is the cure for cancer? Okay, these are uh, things that are affecting that cause cancers, that tri trigger cancers. These are samples of patient files, how they go cancer, etc. And then to try and come to a conclusion in of itself. And then the final stage is self-awareness, which everybody is afraid of. Now, as self-awareness connotes, basically we are hoping that the AI will become sentient. And that goes back to what I said about potentially the world is going to do be the part two, which is our understanding of sentience, our understanding of intelligence, and our understanding of awareness is very, it's, it's, it's a philosophical issue right now. So we haven't been able to fully understand it enough to be able to get to this point, even to the theory of mind point. So um, if you're worried about Skynet <laughs> from Terminator, or you're worried about Matrix happening, um, yeah, it's probably not going to happen in time soon. But like, like I always tell my friends, when it comes to this whole AI conversation, I'm not afraid of the big tech companies, the big tech guys doing dabbling in this because they have a lot to lose and they have a lot to respond for. I'm more afraid of the guy who is tinkering in his garage or the uh, lady who is tinkering in her garage or who, well, whoever it is that is tinkering and those are the ones that we should be both of them worried about. So um, this is the end of part one. If you guys want me to do a part two, let me know. I'm still going to do a part two because I actually enjoy that part. This is a very philosophical um, conversation. Like I said, it's going to be titled The Frame Problem, which is one of the one of the big challenges when it comes to getting AI to the self-awareness stage. Uh, jump up in the comment section. Ask me your questions. What do you want to know about AI? What else would you want me to talk about? So always like share comment subscribe get my subscribers up so that i can feel a little good some gratification <laughs> from him to bit but currently i'm enjoying this so i'm hoping um i'll keep doing this and i could i would like some gratification from the internet so um as always i'll catch you guys in the next one we go crush peace